Welcome to the Golden Button Detours, I guess, is what we kind of decided on. Um, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So so I'm here with Blake. Uh, this is our first time doing the show here, and it's going to be a little bit of a different show. It's going to be probably less topical based, even though the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, super topical. But, you know, <laughs> we're going to go through a whole bunch of things. I think the only consistent is going to be is that each episode is going to have a what if section. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. And um, I guess the first thing, Blake, is you want to kind of introduce yourself? I mean, everyone should know who I am, I feel like. Yeah, sure. So, hey, everyone. Um, this is Blake. Um, I've been listening to the the podcast probably for around three years, right about when we all went into lockdown uh, for COVID. Um, and I've been listening ever since and have enjoyed every minute of it. Um and uh, so I have, I've got uh, three boys that have all grown up with Disney. I've taken them on trips and we just got back from our latest trip where I only took the, the youngest one uh, with me and my wife. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I mean, let's be honest. That's really why I wanted you to come on is because yeah, of right. the trip that's report. Good. Let's be real. So <laughs> I, I, I think the first thing though, I, I have to talk about today is Inside Out 2 trailer just got released today. Yeah. I have this feeling that this is going to be, you know, not that Pixar really needed saving, but they kind of, you know, they needed a little bit. And I think this is going to be a movie that just resonates with everybody. I am super excited about this. Love the first one. I think even now, you know, that movie is is a little bit older, the first one inside out, and people still talk about it. So Right. And they're going back to a known quantity, something they know works for them. But I also think it's super relatable for everybody. And the kind of the, again, unfortunately, if you haven't seen the trailers, it's not going to be, you know, ruining anything for you. But anxiety is the new emotion that comes into play in the trailers about anxiety. And I think that, you know, that's something that everyone can relate to. And I think that's why this is going to do so well. I am super excited for this one. Yeah. Super yeah. It, it looks really cool. I have seen it. So Yeah, so I, I'm going to end up writing an article about this over at BSC Kids on why I think this is going to save, you know, the, the animated movies from Disney for some time now. And I, I think that there's just a lot to like about that. So super non-topical show. First thing we talk about, you know, topical. But that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So we're we're winging it here, folks. In case you haven't figured it out quite, we are absolutely <laughs> winging it. And I think for myself, this is just kind of you know a regular sort of week thing. But for Blake, it's you know probably your first one, right? Your first podcast you've been on. Absolutely, very first podcast episode ever. So yeah. So this is not well. I don't know if this is going to necessarily be released always with. The other show, this is, you know, it's kind of a separate show. And the reason I kind of brought it up is because I know that I've been off of the main show for a couple of weeks just because of life, right? Like still Mm -hmm. got, you know, three kids doing a lot of stuff. And this was a way for me to kind of talk about things when I couldn't necessarily make the show. But I also think that this might end up filling in the show. I'm also hopeful we can get some interviews, just some different things that are easier to coordinate um, with, you know, really just me having to coordinate it and right. rather than Tom and Trevor and coordinating everything. So this is not going to be, a, you know, necessarily a replacement, even though this week, you know, that Tom had unfortunately had some things come up. So maybe it replaces this week. Not sure. But yeah, so this is, this is not going to be welcome home podcast 2.0. But. No, no, it is not. No, this is not. So I think one of the things that you brought up, Blake was, you know, we want to talk about different, you know, kind of things maybe. And one of yours was, well, you know, what's kind of, I don't really like your wording here, gaming the system scenario, but let's just say, what's your biggest kind of hack that you use at Disney? And maybe it's something that people are unaware of. So I think for me, the biggest thing that we use all the time that has made such a great difference, especially as the kids have been growing up, is the the free water. Like, I, I, I get it's a little 
tough to go up to one of the places and ask for free water, right? But it, it's not right. like, it's not a thing. It's a thing. Free water is a thing. We don't buy water at all. Yeah, we Unless don't. there's, no, unless there's like an issue, right? So there have been some times, unfortunately, where like, it's been so hot and there has been a level of kind of heat exhaustion that may be creeping up for, you know, one of the kids or something. And then if we can't find, you know, a free water place quick enough, then yes, we'll, we'll get a water or things like that. But more often than not, you know, there's a ton of places and, you know, as long as you can get over, I guess, right. We can, you know, a little throw back to the first section already, a little anxiety that you might have asking it's, it's the biggest thing. It's yeah, the biggest and, thing possible. And I've seen cast members, even who work behind the counters at like the, the, the quick stop uh, food mm-hmm. places, they they encourage that or they'll say, I've seen a, a, a guest go up and say, is there a water fountain anywhere I can fill my bottle up? And they said, no, don't do that here. I've got ice water right here. So it's, you know, Absolutely. you should never feel uh, embarrassed. Let me put it that way, to go ask for that water. It's Absolutely. there for you. Mm-hmm. You're yep. you're paying for it in your ticket. Trust me. <laughs> but I, I do feel like there is some anxiety around that. I know that I've asked my kids to go do it, and that is something that just will not happen, especially at this point. So it's usually my wife going and handling that portion. But yeah, as long as you can get over that little anxiety that you might have asking, yeah, that's that's probably the biggest hack that we use regularly that not everyone necessarily uses. So okay. So you're looking at current hacks. Now the way I the way I looked at it was what was the biggest hack oh. I've ever used? Oh, man, so, I'm running shoes on. Yeah, that it's a different it's a different scenario at that point. Go ahead. All right, so let me tell you about mine. So we <clears throat> 3 years ago my oldest son uh graduated from high schools and we went to Disney. That was his senior trip, right? Mm-hmm. Um was was supposed to be a cruise, but you know, COVID nixed all of that. So we made the plans going to Disney. Great. And then after all of that, they made the announcement that uh, Magical Express was going away. But it was still going to be active when we were going to be there. But, you know, we were only going to be able to use it this last time. Well, the way I had set up the trip was that we were going to spend one night at Disney Swan and Dolphin and then move over to the Boardwalk Villas. All right. Well, if you know, Magical Express did not go to Disney Swan and Dolphin. So I was like, man, I gotta, we gotta figure out a way to use this Magical Express one time. Cause we love Magical Express. Like the whole, mm-hmm. like to us, that's, that's your prepping, that's your entry gateway into the bubble that starts the Got whole to. experience. And so I started looking around, poking around, trying to find like, is there a way we can just get a room one night somewhere on resort? to use Magical Express. And and this was at a time where the parks had just recently kind of opened back up. Mm -hmm. Everybody had this pent-up travel demand. So, like, rooms were crazy. Like, even, like, Art of Animation and All Stars, like, they were $250-plus a night. I mean, it was crazy. So I kept looking and finally stumbled across this. Did you know that at Fort Wilderness Campgrounds, you can book one night out on a campsite, which is mm-hmm. nothing more than a cleared bare spot on the ground mm-hmm. and a concrete pad for your vehicle. No water, no electricity. You can rent that or uh, book that three years ago for about $80, $80 okay. a night. And when I was looking at the Lyft and the Uber, you know, that was $60. So I started thinking, man, for $20 more, I can stay on resort and get use of the Magical Express. So that's what I did. Okay. I booked one night, kept booked one night at the at the campground. I kept my Swan and Dolphin because that's where we we're going to stay. Yeah. But I booked one night at the campground, and when we arrived at uh, at MCO Orlando International, went down to the Magical Express lane. The guys, the the folks there greeted us. Hey, Mister Long, how you doing? Um, I said, we've got you down here. You're staying one night uh, at the the campground. And then I went up, hey, let's talk about this for a second. So I t- And I flat out explained to him, honestly, the entire deal. Mm-hmm. And we were staying at Swan and Dolphin. And really, I just booked this because we wanted to do Magical Express one more time. Okay. And he looked at me and he said, okay. And so I said, I know you can't take me to Swan and Dolphin. Can you at least take me to like Yacht Club or 
beach club so that mm-hmm. we can at least walk from there. And he's like, sure. So that's exactly what we did. He took us to yacht club. We walked in the front door, looked at the lobby, said, this looks great. And then we walked right out the back door and walked around the boardwalk to the Swan and Dolphin. So we got nice. to use Magical Express. I like that. I mean, if if we're going to bring up like biggest hacks ever, I feel like for myself was always that, you know, get everyone's ticket and have one person run to the fast pass um, boxes that printed out the paper fast passes. Yeah, that absolutely. was always my thing, right? Like I just get everyone's stuff and, you know, maybe have like 10 cards with me and just yep. boom, boom, Hold, boom, boom. Holding boom. five magic bands and just going and scanning each one of them. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, even before that, when there was just cards, right? Oh, that yeah, was, it was always cards. a fun thing. Yeah. yeah you just take everyone's cards and boom, just knock them out real quick, get all your fast passes. So I think that was fun. So it, it's interesting, though, you know, both of us being from North Carolina. So you fly from here and you don't drive, huh? Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> we are both of a kind of a certain age. And it's, I'm getting to the point where driving for 10 hours is just not enjoyable for me mm. anymore. And so, and I'll be, all right. So a little more background. I, I travel quite a bit for my primary work. And so mm-hmm. I have lots of, lots of airline points and lots okay. of, so I get to use that. So flying for me is second. See, for, for, yeah. for me, the, 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 you know, part of the, just this hack conversation is not doing breakfast. Right. And I can only really accomplish that if I go in a car and, you know, when we go in a car, we'll bring food, we'll bring, you know, waters, we'll bring all of that stuff, you know, and then not do breakfast at all. Right. And the way we get around that is because I've got status with airlines, I get to check bags for free. So Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll literally fill one hard shell suitcase up with nothing but breakfast, like, you know, pop tart boxes and the individual cereal things, you know, so that's, we don't buy the breakfast either. So, but that's gotcha. how we get around it. Yeah. So that's a good thing. All right. So this next section, and and as you can already tell, right, these are going to be shorter shows. There's no food talk. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> there, there is, you know, not a lot besides just kind of a short little show, which is kind of what we wanted. So the next thing is this what if, right? So if you're familiar with the Marvel comics back in the day, there was this what if section. So I was thinking, you know, everyone knows that I'm not a huge um resale fan, right? All my contracts are real contracts and said, well, the problem is, is that, you know, what do you do if you don't have somewhere to use your points? Yeah, you could sell them back. Yeah, you can bank them. But what if you're done banking? Like, so for us, this has come up a few times where we've had to, you know, this is why we're doing the cruise on, on all points for us. It's easier. We need to kind of burn some points and things like that. But what if you could use your points for things like lightning lane? What if you could use your points for food or upgrades yeah. or things like that? But I think one of the ones is really this this lightning lane scenario, right? Because yeah. it can be a little pricey if you want to do something with a family of five and you want to, you know, purchase the the lightning lane for just a specific ride, right? Individual lightning lane, it can get pricey. But what yeah. if I could use points? Yeah. I mean, it's already in your bank, so to speak. So why not? And you should be able yeah. to select that and just a la carte, whatever you want to. Yeah. Well, and I think it, I, it generates a greater discussion about, you know, if we had points, it doesn't really hurt Disney to do this. And I, and I just don't think it does because they could take these DVC rooms and flip them to cash rooms. That's not a problem, right? So for them, it shouldn't be an issue. And if you have six points here, five points there, you know, I think maybe people are losing points sometimes. I saw a post just actually today about somebody had six points and they didn't know what to do and they couldn't bank them. They ha- Like, what are you doing with six points, right? And they think that this would be a way for you to use those points so there'd be a less less frustration factor when you come to the point where there's not, you know, a use for a smaller amount of points. Um, I don't right. know. So, I, I kind of like so this me, idea. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So let's sure. say the average, the average price for one point direct from Disney, that's what, like nowadays it's around 200. Is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, th- there'd have to be some, there'd have to be some math, but I would say not even go that route. Just give me the, what you're paying per point when you have to get excess points. Right. So like when you're like a couple points short and you can purchase them as a one-time use points, right. Give me that money, like kind of that relationship of money. I'd be good with that as a number. So then what, let's say lightning lane for your favorite ride, like what okay. in your mind, what's your, 
yeah, I'm willing to spend two points or three points. Like, what's your cutoff where you're saying, Ooh. nah, that's that's too much? Yeah, so I, I think the point scenario would kind of be like this cruise thing, right? Where you're probably not getting your best value for it. So I'm okay with that, again, because sometimes just not spending the money is better than the value of what you have, right? Isn't that what they kind of say for just like when people have like vintage stuff, right? Well, what's it worth? Well, it's worth whatever you're willing, you know, someone willing to pay for it. Exactly. Same sort of thing. So I would say, I think two points. I think there should be a tiered system. I think it could be between one and three and I'm okay with that per person. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. So, you know, if you're figuring that 18 points, I mean, $18 a point, yeah, three would be tough, right? I don't know if I want to spend that per person, maybe one or two. I'd be like good with one or two as a tiered system. Yeah. I, when I was thinking about this and I, my mind went immediately to lightning lane. Also, Mm -hmm. I was thinking, what if you could upgrade the lightning lane to something like universal has where you could do unlimited lightning lanes for an entire day? Ooh, I, I think the problem with that is just management, like, you know, people management. I mean, I guess it, it's always possible. Anything is possible, but just the management of people. I mean, unless you're going to limit that per day, which I guess you could. Yeah. It wouldn't be a bad thing. I'd almost, like I said, I'd love to use points just for like, hey, listen, give me menus at, at every place. Not quick serve. Let's say sit down, right? And right. desserts could be worth two points. Like. <laughs> Right? Like dinners could be worth four. Like I'm okay with that. I just literally a la carte is what. Yes, you're. literally a la carte. I feel like there's an opportunity. I think it solves you know a few problems that you know people have, and maybe even Disney has. It allows them to kind of really make more money at the end of the day when you think about it. Yeah. And I'd be okay with that as kind of my my what if. Um, I I, w- I would throw in VIP tours. As well is something you could. Oh, I mean, how many points would that take, though? Like, uh, I know that's that's but, the thing. See, see, so this this is kind of the thing, right? So let's just say you're a DVC member, and you 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 know you take your loan out, you do your ten years. Doesn't matter how many points you have, you could pay it over ten years. That's great, fine, no problem. And then you just don't want to spend the money for something. You should be able to kind of like a home equity loan, right? Like, yeah. listen, I understand that you can rent your points and things like that, right? But You know, outside of these swaps, there are some, you know, you are renting points to get cash back. And then there's, you know, things you have to do when you do that before you use that cash for other things. So, you know, I would say I just like it out there as as everything. Yeah, I'm good with that. How about early entry? Okay. Like, yeah, I understand like that's crazy because now you're talking about having a whole bunch of, um, you know, extra people in the parks. But like, what if you just like, hey, 15 minutes early to the parks, you know, I'm okay with. So would you re- would you remove the current thirty minute for just regular resort yeah. guests? But just give me like fifteen extra minutes so I don't have to wait on that massive line, right? Yeah. Like it was. I'll be honest with you. Even if it was just ten minutes, and even though the rides weren't open, yet, you could at least start walking right to wherever you want to go instead of having to go through that whole you know herd of people at the beginning. I'd be okay with that too. I think there's tons of opportunities for this. Yeah. And I mean, you would only yeah. want this for direct points, right? Not, not everything reason. is always direct points. Everything yeah. <laughs> for me is always direct points, but what about even just minivan? Like what if you like made it like, Hey, okay, listen, I'm not going to get crazy here. I'm just going to keep it pretty, you know, down to earth and just minivans. Yeah. What if I could just use minivans? Like that would be great too. Wow. Like, so what if you were buying into DVC? Let's say mm-hmm. this existed and you were yep. buying into DVC. Would you budget extra money or would you budget extra? So let's say you want to, you know, you want to stay at Boardwalk always and you want to stay a week. So that toss costs 300 points. But yep. then there's also this, these other things. Would you buy extra points from the get go just to I don't, be able I don't to think I would. extra things? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would. I don't, don't think that I would need to. I would just, this would kind of be like some extra fun benefits that I would use just for, you know, kind of without having to do anything else. Like it's kind of like this cruise that we're doing. I don't really have to do anything. Like I just call up, got a cruise, didn't have to put any money out of my pocket. And the nice thing about a cruise is, is that, you know, it's all inclusive. So I'm literally paying nothing to go on a vacation. That's a win for me. That's a win. And look, I understand people, you know, are upset with me about the whole, well, you know, you could just have done a swap. But here's the thing. When I do a swap, I still have to do work. 
I still have yeah. to make that reservation for somebody. And then if there's a problem, I got to call back and deal with that reservation. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do anything. I just want to call up, get my cruise, be done. I don't want to have it like hanging over my head that like, hey, I might have to make another reservation or cancel a reservation and then re you know, right. do, you don't want places, for somebody else. You don't yeah. want places where things can go wrong. No. And it, it is a little bit of a hassle that that reserving something for somebody else is a hassle. Like it's just, you, you just don't want to do it. So I'm okay with that. So I think that was, you know, kind of our what if for this section. Dude, we are cruising along. When there's no Tom and Trevor, gosh, things go so so quickly. Now there is only two of us though, so we have yeah, to take right. into account. And um, we've been recording what now? Twenty minutes so far? After yeah, that's not so bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's it's flown so by already. <laughs> yeah. So I think that the last thing we kind of want to do is talk about your trip. So I think we will use the golden button detours for people that are making trips that want to talk about them outside of Tom, Trevor, and myself, which we'll talk about them on the main show. But, you know, we kind of want to hear about your trip. So you said this one was a little bit different because it was just your one son and you and your wife, right? Now, how old right. is he? Uh, our youngest is 11. So he just okay. started middle school, sixth grade for those, mm-hmm. you know. So, and it was, <laughs> honestly, it was our first time having a kid that age being the only kid because our two Mm -hmm. older kids were close enough in age that the first time we went, it was always the both of them. And this first time with a young kid that didn't have a sibling to have to argue with all the time, it was such a refreshing experience. (laughs) I'm not going to (laughs) lie. That's so interesting because even though like our kids, like, you know, my kids, you know, my two my two oldest are very close in age as well, and then my daughter's thirteen, so probably a similar situation to what you have. Um, my two oldest boys are like you know stuck together, so that works out well. And my daughter will hang out with them too. It kind of frees up some of our time, to be honest with you. But but go ahead. Yeah. So this was a little different for you, right? So we got there. Um, this was on October twenty eighth, I think. So right at the end of the whole Halloween um, mm. season. Um, and over the course of that trip, we actually got to see two different seasons at Disney, which was We've really cool. We've done that trip as well. Yep. Yeah. So we got to see the Halloween. And at the end of the trip, we got to see the the Christmas put up. So it was really mm-hmm. neat. Um, so we went, and this was our first time using the Genie Plus and Lightning Lane system. Oh, okay. Last time we went, it wasn't available. And I'll be honest, I went into this expecting to hate it. Um <laughs> Just from so what I'd read. And yeah. I, I, that's exactly what I was going to say. I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. Once you get, once you separate it from the old fast pass system, and by that I mean like the old way yeah. you had to use up that lightning, quote unquote, lightning lane before you could book another one. So, yeah, and, there, there's definitely some differences. But you know what the nice thing is? You weren't necessarily up at the crack of dawn 60 days before trying to book your fast passes. So exactly. There is that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the only change I would make to that Genie Plus is I wish you could book the Genie Plus for the day other than the morning of or like the midnight before. Because right now you can't do that, and I kind of wish you could. Yeah, that even was the, the only indi- downside. Individual lightning lane, you have to book it in the morning, so you're kind of still yeah. waking up, booking it, and then going back to bed sort of thing. But yeah, yeah exactly. And that is exactly what happened. So, um, and with this, with the new lightning lane system, I, oddly enough, I actually see a little bit of benefit um, using a lightning lane in limited circumstances for like a parade or show seating. Because if mm. you've got these lightning lanes and it's your turn or it's your time to make a lightning lane and there's nothing you're seeing that, you know, is really kind of interesting you like as far as a ride. Yeah. You know, preferred seating for, you know, a parade or a show is not a terrible thing to use it for. So, I mean, for you, yeah, I'm not about either one of those, but I get it. Yeah. I can understand it. Um, I, I I bought genie plus every single day, probably didn't need to, but Mm -hmm. It was it was interesting to use. I liked it. Um, I want to know about Moana. Like that's really what right. I want to know about. Moana was neat. Um, it's definitely geared towards younger kids, right? Um, you did it they, once or more than once. We did, we did it once. It was interesting. I mean, I don't know that I would. And where you went Epcot again. more than once? Yes. Okay. Um, let me let me put a clarification on that. My family was there. Um, I actually 
a little more information. I actually had to go down for a work conference. And the second mm-hmm. day they were in Epcot, I was in my work conference. So okay. they went into Epcot, but I don't think they did Moana again. Um, it was nice. It was real. It was cool. But it's just one of those things that once you do it one time, you're like, okay, I don't need to go and, back to that. And so was there a line? How how would you were you fed nope. into it? No, there was it would there is a dedicated entrance. There was no yep. line. We did not have to wait. Um and I mean there was a little bit of crowding, so it's kind of set up into I want to call it vignettes, if that mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yep. Um the whole thing is about it's talking about the ecosystem of water. So like yep. it rains, the water goes into streams and then it evaporates back into the air and it's the whole circle of life thing. And each vignette is about each one of those steps okay. in the life cycle of water. So um, the whole thing about the waterfall separating. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, I can see how they use that technology. It's not life. Yeah, the technology from the 1990s. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so did you know what hadn't you seen before? So like, when was your trip before that? So like, what was kind of new to the, you the last? Time? Yeah. So the last trip we took was back in July, 2021. So it's been okay. a little over two years. Um, we had not done Remy because Remy opened up later okay. that year. It's not uh, we, bad. Yeah, I enjoyed Remy. It was it's a neat from a perspective where you were being shrunk down to the size of a rat. Made me a little little like queasy, which I was surprised about because Ride you. Yeah, and that's something over. that I hope Disney does not get on this whole 4D motion simulator kick like like Universal. Uh, yeah. That's just like oh, it's just like a big barf machine. Unless it's holograms. But, if it's holograms then that's Yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you, there hadn't, was, you hadn't gone on Remy. You hadn't gone on um, Guardians um, yet. Oh, okay. So, so the question is, Guardians. What do you think? I like it. Um, I think the ride profile fits the characters that are involved. If that, that makes sense, better than okay. So, Flight of Passage, Guardians, Rock and Roller Coaster. In order, um, I will go. I mean, Guardians is one. Rock okay. and Roller Coaster is two. The Avatar is three. Okay. And I actually, so I made some notes about Avatar. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I like that. It was the first time my 11 year old had ever ridden it. Um, okay. But I'm starting to notice some maintenance issues on that ride. Like the soundtrack wasn't working. Like we rode it two, two times, right? And gotcha. and in one one of those rooms where you ride, the soundtrack wasn't working. So like you got all the sound effects of the animals and the, and the swooshing mm-hmm. and all that. But the soundtrack that was behind it, you couldn't hear that at all. So it kind of took away a little bit. Um, uh, we rode Tron, obviously. Have okay. you ridden that yet? No, I have not. But, okay. I, but I'm also not like, I'm not like super amped for it. I mean. Oh, you gotta, you're going to have to ride it one time. Try to I'm make- sure I will. You know, I think that Tron is one of those with Moana, like I'm not making a trip for it. Oh no! But when I'm there, I will. Like you know, certain things you kind of make a trip for, like, and I don't yeah. think that's one of them. I'm, you know, we're in this weird scenario where we're we were supposed to go to Disney, then we weren't going to Disney this year, and then it was like, all right, we're going to Disney, and we're doing the um, safari, you know, the the paid safari. And I'm thinking that was our thing. Like, okay, we're going to do that, and then you know, we're like, ah, now we're just going to do this cruise. So we burned all our points for this year and next year for the cruise. Right. Okay, so. And that was fine because my goal is to go do the cruise this year. And then we're going to hit Dollywood too, because they have the new um, hotel at Dollywood. So that will be this summer. And the next summer has to be all about Epic Universe. Now, I was trying to save a few points so that (laughs) I could get a room the day before going to Epic Universe at Disney. But yeah, that's next year. So I don't think I'll actually be in the parks again. Oh boy. I mean, so 24 is out, 25 is out, probably 26. I think 26. Wow. Yeah. I just, well, again, I don't see us going next year. If we're going to do Epic Universe, I want to spend all my time there, but one never knows. You know, there's not anything that's on the agenda for Disney that has, you know, has me like, oh man, I got to do that. If there was, maybe that changes, but I don't think so. I don't think yeah. there's anything really. So I, yeah, I wouldn't make Toronto like make a special trip for that. I will say that they have a really neat section in their queue line. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil it, but there's this one part 
if you've wa- have you watched the Tron movies? I'm assuming you have. Uh, only the old one, like not yeah, the new yeah, one. the original. That's what the I'm OG. talking. About. Yeah, yeah. So there's this part in the Q line where you are being digitized onto mm-hmm. the game grid, right? Okay. And what happened? I'm not going to spoil it, but you're taken into the small room, you and a group of people, mm-hmm. and it's part of the Q line. But they say prepare for digit can't say digitization. That. It, yeah, that that gotcha. works. <laughs> so they they say prepare for it. And then the music gets loud and then it, all of a sudden it goes black and something happens that I'm not going to spoil, but it looks really cool. Like it's my second favorite Q-Line experience. So so know, here's the real question. Are you old enough to have played the OG game? That had Absolutely, the big man. I, I pumped so many quarters into that machine. Yeah. I cannot even tell you how much money I wasted on it. Yeah, that was that was always a fun game where you're on the throwing the discs between uh-huh. the, Ride, um, doing the light cycle. Yes. Thing. Yes. That was always a fun um, game for sure. And then other than that, so we then do we have time to talk about Mickey's not so scary? Just right. Of course, of course. I'm right. I'm just gonna go on record saying that I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, but I think that my kids were overtired, which I made the mistake of, and we uh, were waiting we were waiting for a pitcher with the dwarves and then they, something happened. Like one of the dwarves was sick and like the line turned into a disaster and it kind of just squashed our whole night. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So we did. So this was our first time doing the not so scary Halloween party. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed it again. This is one of those things where I'd say, man, this was great. I had a great time. Probably won't do it again until grandkids finally roll into my life. Yeah. But um I think the trick to to the not so scary is to make sure you are either at that part during the day or you park hop into it before four o'clock before they start allowing Yeah, the, the problem was it, just, it. it makes it a long day for younger kids and that was the mistake we made. So we tried to accomplish that, but it just it turned into a little bit of a disaster. Right. Well, we started the day out at Animal Kingdom, which is mm-hmm. already really a half day park, let's be honest. Yep. And so we went back to our room around one o'clock. We chilled out for a little bit and then we got into our costumes and then went to got got into Magic Kingdom around three thirty before they started letting everybody in. Like mm-hmm. then we beelined it to Tomorrowland, like near Stitch's Great Escape, where it used to be. That's okay. where they were giving out the wristbands. Went there. Then we went right back to Town Square Theater. And that's where Jack and Sally were. Okay. Um, we got there in that line, and it said 90 minutes. And we're like, whatever. And it was not. It's just like the rides. They overinflate those wait times. I think we were yeah. in there for 40 minutes. Did that. Then we got uh, Mickey and Minnie in their Halloween costumes. were right mm-hmm. there next to it. Um. And so literally before six o'clock, before the, the whole event even started, we had the main two characters already met and we were able to kind of go around and enjoy. We didn't ride any rides um, during okay. it because I felt like that was a waste of time, to be honest. Like yeah. we were there you to meet characters. Time. Yeah, you yeah, can ride rides sure. anytime. We, we were there to meet characters, get candy, you know, get pictures, watch the shows. Um, so we, yeah, like yeah. I said, we enjoyed it. Um, we all Good. dressed up as variant Lokis uh, to be a little <laughs> topical. Um, I think the only other thing about this trip. Oh, you're going to say something? No, no, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say the only other thing about this trip that we realize we really enjoy. Um, Disney is kind of leaning into the scavenger hunt type exercises in the yeah. different lands. Mm-hmm. Um, like if I wish there was remember, more of them, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. I do too. Like it all. You remember it all started back with like the Phineas and Ferb thing uh, yeah, over and Impossible, and then Ducktail. yeah, Kim Possible. Yep. Now it's Ducktales. My kid loved that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I let him do all the the button pushing, but mm-hmm. I was right there with him because I enjoyed <laughs> every bit of that. Um, yeah. And they have something similar to that now um, in Adventureland in okay. Magic Kingdom where yeah. you use your magic band and you're part of Jack Sparrow's crew and you go do different things. And I mean, yeah. half the, half the fun of that is activating all the special effects and watching the people who are walking by, not knowing what's going on, you know, going like that. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So we're going to, we're going to keep it to our, our preset limit. Unlike the other show with these guys that just run over <laughs> so much, man, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. So a few things we, we do need like theme music at some point. We'll have to work on yeah. that. And then the other thing that's been scaring me here is that I'm watching the lines for your vocals and audio go so much faster than mine 
and that's making me nervous, but hopefully everything comes out okay. So, as we normally do, Golden Button Detours is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and all opinions expressed on this show are our own. Please consult with your DVC cast member or Disney representative for more information on anything we talked about. And that's a big thank you to Tom, right? He always writes that. So I figure I can get in on that. And we have no sponsor as of yet, so that's fine too. So if you like it, you know, jump into the group, give us a review. You can actually say Golden Button Detours if you want in some of the reviews on iTunes. I know that that would be interesting. And, you know, we don't have another scheduled date, but stay tuned. I'm sure we'll be back real soon. And, and hey, don't give us a one-star rating. Don't give the, sh- the don't main show a that. one-star rating just because we might be terrible. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Bye, everyone. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle is no man's affair. I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl. Reading.